Arrow. Is it really as bad as all that? I just finished reviewing Arrow Season 4, so you can check out my complete rundown of the season on that video, but I wanted to do a video that would address the show overall. From the beginning, where its strengths were, how its weaknesses came about, and what the show might do to improve. Firstly, the thing you have to remember with Arrow is that it was all very much conceived in the soap opera mold to begin with. It didn't just arrive there all of a sudden with Elicity. It was like that from the beginning. This pretty much stems from Smallville, yes, Smallville, the gift that keeps on giving, and how the CW just wasn't ready yet to embrace the superhero concept with both hands. That whole first season, you could tell. They wouldn't even let him wear a mask at first. They gave him that silly grease paint mask. It must have taken him 45 minutes to wash it off after doing his superheroing. I can see him toting a wash basin and a bar of soap with him in order to make a quick change. But I digress. Anyway, the show was always soap opera first, superhero show second. But to be honest, I can actually stand Elicity even more than the soap opera trappings they gave us during the first two seasons. Think about it. The first two seasons are generally held up as the best. But they were filled with some of the worst soap opera tripe imaginable. You had Ollie presumed dead after cheating on his girlfriend with her sister. Ollie's girlfriend then takes up with his best friend in the meantime. Even Huntress, as crazy as they made her, I had to remark on just how bizarre the whole thing was. Then you have Ollie's mom taking up with Walter, her late husband's business partner. Then we learn she had an affair with Malcolm that produced Thea. The same Thea that kinda sorta had a schoolgirl crush on Tommy that turned out to be her brother. Thea, of course, also had her drug issues. And then they had Laurel have her drug and alcohol issues, which really was what soured her on a lot of people. They really ruined her at that point. Now that all sounds like an episode of Maury Povich more than The Green Arrow to me. That's why, if they're going to foist badly written romance drama on me, I can take it in stride at this point. It's actually preferable to all the sensationalistic crap they put out in the supposedly good seasons of the show. The problem is they don't know how to effectively write romantic drama, relationship drama, Look at what they did with Fitzsimmons over in AOS, for example. They don't keep coming up with convoluted ways of having them break up and make up over and over and over again. And yet, it's still interesting. It looks like they were finally going to get together, but then Fitz gets brain damage. Then it looks like they're going to get together, but then Simmons gets stuck on another world where she shacks up with a hunky astronaut. There isn't the same kind of contrivance as there is on Arrow, where Felicity walks out on Ollie for the last time, three times a season. On Arrow, they don't want to take the time to build up the relationship between Felicity and Oliver. They want to bounce them back and forth, taking them to extremes, in order to keep the interest of the Elicity shipper cult. One minute they're playing out a romance novel, the next some foolish little thing breaks them apart again. Now the problem isn't inherently with Felicity. A lot of people hate the character now, but when she was written well, she was quite popular. I like Felicity a lot when they use her to her strengths, as they did in the first two seasons where she was a consistently fun and light-hearted character. So I really have nothing against the character. Felicity worked best as a humorous character, a breath of fresh air amidst the angst and the drama. And she was effective in the Girl Friday type of way, which is an old motif in the classic hero genre. She's a vital assistant, but not romantically involved with the hero, despite admiring him deeply. The hero tends to remove himself from being emotionally available to her and is more seen as her boss than her equal, despite the obvious attraction. This was the kind of relationship that Kirk was supposed to have with Yeoman Rand in TOS before Grace Lee Whitney left the show. I'm not really a big Bond guy, but I'm told this also kind of applies to Bond and Moneypenny's relationship, at least in the early films. But now you know they have to make her empowered or whatever to appeal to feminists, and now she has to be the most important person in the room and can't be subordinate to Oliver. So the classic Girl Friday motif wasn't going to be used here for long to begin with. Felicity is not the type of character to get the hero, at least not as early as the third season. There's nowhere else to take them for the next eight or nine seasons when you've already made them a couple by decree. Even in the series itself, the characters all act like it's a foregone conclusion that Ollie and Felicity will end up together. It's almost frightening to see. It's one thing to give the fans a little more of what they like, but when you're talking about a shipping cult like Elicity, you can't ever really please them by putting the couple together. It kills whatever romantic tension you have, but you risk their ire by keeping them apart too long, which leads to a frustratingly circular pattern. Arrow was never going to be in the mold of The Flash or Supergirl where their priorities are on the comic book concept first and foremost. If you look at it, Arrow has only tried to be a superhero series beginning to end for one season, Season 2, and fans universally call Season 2 Arrow's best season. So I don't know why the showrunners are so desperate to run away from that. You make Arrow a superhero show first, 
and not try to distance yourself from Flash by saying, we're the grounded show, and that's what will bring the fans back. Of course, it also doesn't help that WB has embargoed tons of comic characters, particularly villains like Deathstroke and Deadshot, that could add to the show's strengths. That's why they really aren't getting much traction in the seasoned villain department. It boggles the mind that the Flash series can do whatever they want, and Supergirl managed to score the Man of Steel himself as a guest, but Arrow can't even have its best recurring villains appear. My fears for Season 5 is that they just try to ape Daredevil's success by trying to squeeze more gritty crime drama in between the same illicity drama. Arrow needs to be its own thing, and trying to out Daredevil Daredevil isn't going to make anyone happy. But it's really past time that they break away from illicity and focus on what made the show great in Season 2, the rich comic book flavor. Well, in the end, I still really enjoy the show despite all its setbacks in the past two seasons. It's not this horrible train wreck that a lot of fans make it out to be. I know that it seems fashionable to bash the show these days. I know we all want the show to be as good as it can be. But in my opinion, the show's flaws are inherent to the concept to begin with. It was only ever a soap opera with masks. That's what it began as, and it's probably going to stay that way as long as Mark Guggenheim is the showrunner. That's why I say, if you have any hope of enjoying the show, it's best to approach the show on its own terms. It seems not enough people are willing to take the good with the bad, so in all honesty, the best thing they could do is retire Guggenheim and give the show a new showrunner, somebody that can hold all the pieces in check and make Arrow great again. This is Johnny Torch stepping down from my soapbox and reminding you, keep the flame burning brightly, and I'll be with you again real soon.